Hi, welcome to an introduction to modern cryptography. So last week we were talking about simple cryptography, historical ciphers that you can do by hand. This week we're going to begin talking about modern cryptography, which are which is cryptography that requires computers and many site many of these algorithms we're going to talk about are in use today to protect confidential information. So let's go ahead and get started. So modern cryptography is based heavily on mathematics, and a lot of that math is hard. Uh, it ranges from difficult to extremely difficult, but it's probably one of the most uh, useful applications of mathematics that we're doing in computing right now is cryptography. We aren't going to cover the mathematical details in this class. If you want the details, then Wikipedia is an excellent resource because it covers a lot of the details that you need to actually build and implement various cryptographic algorithms. Uh, today, I'm just going to do a very brief overview of the three main types of cryptography. So there are three types of cryptography. The first is called secret key cryptography, or symmetric cryptography. The second is called public key cryptography, or asymmetric cryptography. And the third is called a message digest, or hashing. So let's talk in a slightly more detail about each of those. So one important thing I want you to remember from our discussion of simple cryptography is that most of our, encrypt most of our encryption techniques have two basic things. The first is an algorithm, which is what you do to the message in order to encrypt it. And the second is a key, which is the secret that you need in order to encrypt or decrypt properly. Now remember, the algorithm is not a secret, but the key is. So that's an important thing to realize as we go forward here. Okay, so the first type of modern cryptography is, is called secret key or symmetric key crypto. Now, symmetric uh, is the word we use to mean that something is the same on both sides. So like the human face is symmetric because it's the same on the right and the left half. Um, secret key cryptography has the name symmetric for that reason, because both parties in the cryptography use the same key. So for example, let's say that we have Alice and she's going to send her secret message to Bob. Well, she takes her message and she puts it into the algorithm along with a key. So in this picture, the calculator represents the algorithm. So her key and her message go into the secret key or symmetric algorithm, and it produces a ciphertext, her encrypted message. She sends that ciphertext to Bob, and Bob combines that ciphertext with the same key that Alice used. So we're assuming here that Alice and Bob have this key that they share and that they've shared it for a long time. He puts both of those into his symmetric key algorithm, and he gets out the original message. So this is how you would normally think of cryptography as working. You put a message and a key into the algorithm, and you get out your ciphertext, and you put a ciphertext and a key into the algorithm, and you get out the original message. Public key or asymmetric key crypto uh, is a little bit different. So asymmetric basically means not symmetric. So in this case, Alice and Bob are going to use different keys in the encryption and decryption process. So to start with, let's imagine that Bob has two different keys, a private key and a public key. Now pretend that those two keys are mathematically related, and we'll talk about what that relationship looks like uh, in a later week this semester, but for now, just know that they're mathematically related, and Bob's public key is public. Anyone in the world can know it, and it's not a security problem. But his private key is private. Only Bob should know his private key. So if Alice wants to send Bob a message in an asymmetric cryptographic system, she takes her message and she encrypts it using Bob's public key. Now that produces her ciphertext, which she sends to Bob. And when Bob decrypts it, he uses his private key in order to get back the original message. So this, this is different than what you would normally think of for cryptography. They're not using the same key. Alice encrypts with Bob's public key, and Bob decrypts with his private key. So the third type of modern cryptography is called a message digest or hashing. And in this case, our goal is to transform any arbitrary message into a fixed length number. So hashing is not a technique for cryptography, but we lump it in with cryptography because we use it in other cryptographic techniques. All hashing is, is we take, a fi we take an arbitrary length message of any kind, and it transforms it into a fixed length number. The hash should always be one way. So going from message to hash, so if I give you a message, you should be able to hash it easily. But if I give you the hash, you shouldn't be able to determine the message easily. Now, we'll look at hashing in a lot more detail in the coming weeks, but for now, that's just what you need to know. 
Uh, an important aspect of it is that it's widely used in a lot of areas of computing. Hashing is not just used in security, it's used in many, many other areas as well. So we're going to spend some time on this so that you better understand it in the coming weeks. Okay, the, the next thing I want to discuss in kind of this brief intro to modern cryptography is the various types of cryptanalysis. So we said before that cryptanalysis is when you try to break a cryptographic cipher. So, you know, so I give you cipher text, you try to get the key, or you try to get the message, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, there's three main types of cryptanalysis that we perform, and I just want to give you these so you have them in your vocabulary. The first is called a ciphertext-only attack, and this is what you would normally think of with cryptanalysis: as in the attacker gets some ciphertext and they need to decrypt it, and that's all they have. They just have some ciphertext and the need to decrypt it. Um, so this is what you did in class last week in our exercise: is that you had some ciphertext that you got from another team, and your job was to simply decrypt it. Now, another type of cryptanalysis is a known plaintext attack. And what this means is that the attacker knows some ciphertext and its corresponding plaintext, and they want to decrypt some other ciphertext. Okay, so that's an interesting idea. They, they know some ciphertext and plaintext, and they want to decrypt some other ciphertext. This is a more powerful attack. The attacker can do more if they know some plain text ciphertext pairs than if they don't know any. And the third type of cryptanalysis is a chosen plain text attack. In this case, the attacker can get any plain text that he wants encrypted, but he has some specific ciphertext he wants to decrypt. This is an even more powerful attack. So here's our three types: ciphertext only, known plain text, chosen plain text. Okay, so let's sum up this very brief introduction. Uh, there are three types of cryptography in modern cryptography. Symmetric, or secret key cryptography. Asymmetric, or public key cryptography. And hashing, or digest. There are three types of cryptanalysis. Ciphertext only, known plain text, and chosen plain text. Now, we're going to talk about all of this in more detail in the coming weeks and in activities in class, but I just wanted to introduce you to the concepts now. Thanks.